Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at charge moving perpendicular to an electric field. So let's get started. Now, we've already seen what will happen when charge moves parallel to an electric field, but now we're going to look at charge moving perpendicular to an electric field, i.e. where the charge moves parallel to the plates. Now, it can be shown that the equation for a charged particle moving perpendicular to a uniform electric field, i.e. parallel to the plates, takes the form of a parabola, y equals kx squared, where k is a constant. And I'm going to show you a simulation to help you understand this. If you have a look at this setup down here for a cathode ray tube, you can see we've got two EHT supplies and we've got this grid screen between the two plates. And you've also got an anode and a cathode letting this cathode ray tube work. To produce an electron beam on the screen here, what we can do is increase the voltage on our anode and the electrons will be produced by the heated cathode. And the electrons then accelerate from the heated cathode to the anode. So I'm going to set this anode voltage to about 2 kilovolts roughly and then you'll see that we've got this purple beam going straight through the plates undeflected. That is because there's no potential difference applied between the plates here. The potential difference is currently 0 kilovolts. However, if we increase the plate voltage, then we should see that the beam starts to curve. And this shows us the parabola shape that we're talking about in the notes. So if we applied an equation to this, it would take the form of y equals kx squared, where k is a constant. And that is the typical curved shape for an electron beam that we would see when we've got a potential difference applied between the plates, say the bottom plate is 0 volts and the top one is about 1.9 kilovolts, and we've got this clear parabola shape. I'm just going to show you another simulation now to help you understand the direction in which the electron beam or the charged particles will go. Let's say we start with a negative charge passing through the plates which have no potential difference between them. You'll notice that the charge will just pass straight through undeflected. However, let's say we've now applied a potential difference to the top plate, so we've got a positively charged top plate and a zero voltage bottom plate, so that's essentially our negatively charged plate. So we've got positive to negative, so we've got the electric field lines going from positive to negative. So if we click play here, you should see that the electron will bend up the way towards the positively charged plate. And that shows the parabolic path here between the plates, and then the undeflected path as it leaves the plates. The reason it's doing that is because the electron is negatively charged and will be attracted towards the positively charged plate and also repelled away from the negatively charged plate. We can also swap the polarity of the plates though and if we did that we could have zero volts on the top plate and our positively charged plate on the bottom. So if we swap the wires around in our little cathode ray experiment then click play we should see that the electron this time bends and curves down the way because it's now being attracted towards the positively charged plate on the bottom and repelled away from the negatively charged plate on the top. So if you look at the diagram here, you can see what we've discussed already. The charge moving at a velocity u will pass through the plates and be attracted towards the positively charged plate and will follow this curved parabolic path in between the plates. It can then go off in a straight path where it's undeflected and hit some sort of screen to be detected. It says here that the path of an electron passing between the parallel plates is a parabola while the electron is within the plates. That is, it experiences a force and is therefore deflected. After it leaves the region of the plates, the path of the electron will be a straight line, since it no longer experiences a force. We can treat these types of problems similar to projectile problems, i.e. we can use the equations of motion. So you might be asked to try and calculate the vertical displacement or the vertical deflection of the particle. Lastly, it says that applications of electrostatic deflections include deflection experiments to measure the charge to mass ratio for the electron and the cathode ray oscilloscope. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.